Ladies and gentlemen, it is 2022, and I think it is time for us to finally put VirtualBox in the retirement home. It has served us well throughout the years, but in current times, there is no reason to not be using QEMU. It's available on pretty much any GNU Linux distro, and most distros, they also include the kernel modules for it for KVM inside of the kernel, and the performance is spectacularly faster than VirtualBox. I've even heard of cases where people have created virtual Windows machines specifically for gaming and actually getting very close to bare metal performance in those VMs, which is something completely unheard of when trying to use VirtualBox for that. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do an install of it on your Linux system, and I'll also show you how to use Vert Manager as a front end for QEMU, because by itself, QEMU is a terminal application, and I think that might be part of the reason that some people are a little bit hesitant to use it over VirtualBox. And also it might just be the fact that it doesn't all just come bundled in one package, but I'll be happy to show you how to set it up. I'll be show happy to show you how to use Vert Manager so that you can use a nice GUI and make things very easy for yourself. And then when you're ready, you can embrace the power of the terminal. And speaking of the terminal, go ahead and open one up because the first step is we need to install some packages. So we're going to be installing these packages specifically, QEMU, Vert Manager, Vert Viewer, DMS Mask, VDE2, Bridge Utils, and OpenBSD Netcat. And also you could install libguestfs, which is a set of tools used to access and modify virtual machine disk images. So I'll go ahead and leave all of these packages in the description of this video so that you can just paste them in. Uh, but keep in mind, they might have different names depending on what distro you're using. Now, if you're using Artix Linux, then the libvert package is actually divided up into two parts. There's the package itself, which we just installed with Pacman, and then there's init scripts for the different init systems available on Artix, like Runit or OpenRC. So since I'm using OpenRC, I'll also need to install the package libvert-openrc. And this might also be the case on other Linux distros that give you a choice of your init system. Now, one side note to the folks using systemd, which is probably most of you, the commands for enabling, starting, and stopping services are going to be different on your system. You'll be using systemctl instead of RC service. And I'm sure that those of you out there who are using the non-systemd init systems, you already know the specific commands for whichever one you're using. So next, we need to start the service with sudo rc service libvert d start. And then you want to also add it to the default run level. So that's gonna be sudo rc update add libvert d. And I've already done it, so it's given me uh, messages that I've already done it. And next, we need to edit our libvertd.conf file to enable your user account to use KVM. Uh, so first, we need to make sure that Unix sock group is set to libvertd. And then here, we need to make sure that Unix sock ro perms is set to zero. 777, and we need to make sure that Unix sock RW perms is set to 0770. All right, and then you wanna go ahead and save the file. Well, I'm just gonna quit out of it. And then you want to add yourself to the libvert D group or the libvert group, uh, the current user that you're logged in as. So that's going to be sudo usermod ag libvertd, and then whatever your username is. And then of course, to apply the group update, you're going to have to either log out or reboot your Linux system. And then finally, we're going to restart the libvert service, which for us OpenRC guys is rc service libvertd restart, uh, as sudo, of course. 
And there you go. We just made a big upgrade to your virtualization abilities on your Linux box. You can go ahead and uninstall VirtualBox now. Um, so now I'm gonna walk you through the steps to install a virtual machine, just really basic, and I'll show you. Um, I'll actually show you how to do a Windows one since I think for one, Windows actually does tend to be a little bit trickier to set up. And two, that's probably one of the main operating systems that you'd want to virtualize on a Linux desktop. For example, if you find yourself needing to run Windows software on Linux, a very good way to do that is to get a pretty powerful desktop uh, that obviously has plenty of CPU cores and RAM to give to a virtual machine and then just create a Windows VM and run that software in there. Now, of course, it's not gonna be as fast as bare metal, but with this KVM, QEMU, uh, Vert Manager setup, we can get pretty close to that. Uh, so open up Virtual Vert Manager. And the first thing you wanna do is actually make sure you're connected to the hypervisor. So you wanna come over here to QEMU slash KVM and click connect. And I've got this Windows 10 VM that I created here earlier. Now, if Connecting to this gives you some type of error like libvirt not started or not installed, something like that. Then it means that you probably messed something up during the installation process. So just go back and check over that. Or possibly if it gives you an error about KVM, you might not have that enabled in your kernel. So go check with your distro maintainer if the kernel module is not enabled. And of course, make sure that you installed all the packages that I showed you in the beginning of the video. Uh, so next we're going to go to edit and preferences and you want to make sure that enable XML editing is checked so that uh, we can change that directly to make slightly more advanced configurations to our VM. And you also want to make sure here in connection details that your virtual network is active. Uh, and you make sure that it's got NAT forwarding and that everything is set up here. Or you can customize this however you want, or honestly, you don't even need to use it, but keep in mind if you don't have this set up, you're not going to have an internet connection inside of your virtual machine. So now let's create a virtual machine. So come up here to create a new virtual machine and choose local install media, ISO image or CD-ROM, forward, and then we're going to click browse and browse local. And then um, we're going to use a, well, like I said, a Windows VM in this case. Uh, you can use one like this that fell off a pirate ship or we can use a legit one <laughs> downloaded from Microsoft. Uh, and then forward, oh, we have to type uh, what OS we have in here. So Win10. Again, it's all very similar to VirtualBox. It's just things are kind of in different areas. And then we'll give our virtual machine a little bit of RAM and um, give it some CPU cores. Uh, of course, with virtual machines, you generally don't want to give it more than half of what you've got. So I'll just give it 16 since I've got a Threadripper. And then we want to create our virtual disk. With Windows, you need to use a little bit more because it's pretty bloated. So we'll do 60 gigs. Uh, really, if, if you're going to really use this a lot, I would recommend probably 128 or more. This is just a little example. Uh, so forward, and we're going to click customize configuration before install. Okay, and then we're going to go into the XML and we're going to delete these two lines under uh, clock offset local time. Then we're going to change this one to yes. And doing this should reduce the CPU usage of the virtual machines by a bit. Then we're going to apply that and I'll go back to details. So under the topology, I'm going to edit this. So you've got sockets, cores, and threads. Sockets are uh, how many individual CPUs there are, like physical CPUs. So for whatever reason, it just sets it to B16, which is kind of dumb. <laughs> so we're going to have it just be one, and then cores is like how many CPU cores. Um, I'll do eight, and then for each core, I'll let it have two threads. So that's pretty more of a normal configuration. You might not have to do this. 
uh, depending on which um, CPU you have. So you can just use this default and come down here and see what it looks like. And if it looks uh, normal, then you can leave it be. And uh, let's see, that's good. Um, we'll go and change this to vert IO. And we'll also do the same thing with our network card. Okay, and uh, there's one more step that's necessary when using Windows because it's annoying, is you have to download some drivers for uh, the installation for it to be able to recognize the virtual disk. So the one that you'll want is this vertio win.iso, and I can leave a link to this in the description of this video. Uh, and then to be able to have that detected because we've already got um, this one, we've already got this one CD-ROM here that's using the Windows ISO. So we need to just go to add hardware storage and we'll make it a CD-ROM. Okay. So now we have CD-ROM two and then we can browse, browse local and the Vertio Windows 10. And again, this isn't necessary if you're gonna be setting up a Linux guest. Uh, and then we'll apply that. And uh, yeah, this is fine just cause I already had it set from over here. And we can begin the installation. Oh yeah, I even gave it the same name. <laughs> so um, now you can do screen if you want and then it's basically the same as a regular installation uh, you go through the install probably won't go through the entire install but you get the idea um, you would use I don't have a product key and just choose whichever version of Windows you want accept the uh, license term you know sell your soul to Microsoft <laughs> custom install, and then from here, this is where you would have to load the, um, the driver. Actually, we want to do load driver, click OK, uh, and here we go. So we'll select the one that's for Windows 10. And then it loads it in for us so that it's actually able to detect the disk. All right, and then we just go next. And then Windows does its uh, proprietary magic. But luckily, all of this proprietary spookiness is going to be contained inside of a virtual machine, which, again, is going to give you better performance than VirtualBox. So ditch VirtualBox, go ahead and install Vert Manager QEMU, and you're going to have a much better time with virtualization. Hope you found this video useful. Leave a like and comment to hack the algorithm and have a great day.